everybody. Welcome to Creative Bug Live. We're coming at you live like we always do on Tuesdays and Thursdays, although we did have a little sneak peek yesterday. Today is Thursday and I thought I would show you some cherry blossom crafting ideas because cherry blossoms are in bloom in many parts of the world. They're super beautiful, but they're always so fleeting because they don't last long enough. So I thought you could eternalize these blooms in paper or even in yarn. And I'm gonna show you how to do it both ways. These little paper flowers or yarn flowers um, make great package toppers. They can be a really nice place setting if you're having something like a Mother's Day brunch or just for fun. You can even take cherry blossom branches after all the blooms have fallen off and then make your own paper blossoms to add on top. The things that you need are pretty simple and of course you can make cherry blossoms in lots of ways. I like to use tissue paper for this particular paper flower because Cherry blossom petals tend to be so delicate and translucent and so tissue paper has that quality already and I just have like a pretty pale pink and I got it from my local Joanne store. You can also use um, floral tape in brown or green. You definitely will need some floral tape. Floral tape is different than regular tape because it's not inherently sticky just off the roll. What happens is it's actually wax based and it's stretchy unlike regular tape or washi tape and as you kind of stretch it and work with it and the heat from your hands will kind of create a tackiness which allows it to stick to itself. So this is really key for all paper flower making. And then depending on how you want to do this, um, you can work on cloth wrapped wires. You can also get this in the floral section at your local Joanne. They come in different thicknesses. So let me just show you. I don't know if Taryn can see this but this one is thicker than this one. And the way the gauges work is actually, this is 18 gauge and this is 22 gauge. So even though the number is higher, the thickness is thinner, if that makes sense. Sometimes you have to think about that a little bit backwards. I also have a pair of scissors. I've got a twig to show you a variation using an existing branch. A pair of wire snips to be cutting these wires. You don't want to use your craft scissors with um, your wire because you'll ruin them. I just threw out a pair today. And then I have a little bit of pearl cotton. You could use embroidery floss or really thin yarn. And this is how we're gonna create our stem, stamens or the center of the flower. So let's start with this. Just take off about a foot or so. And I like to double it up and then double it up again. And then let's try one more double. Yeah, I think that'll be okay. And then you can take this and tie it in a knot right in the center. It's going to make like a little bow. And then you're going to just slide your scissors into those loops and snip them. And this creates the stamen. You can also use what's called a pip for that. And that's like the, I don't have one here, but it's um, little threads that have little balls at the end that look like stamens. And you can usually find those in the floral aisle. So that's going to be like our little stamen and you can, you know, trim all your threads. Uh, otherwise, sometimes I like them looking a little irregular. That looks more natural to me. You can also make a bunch of these all at once and try different lengths and try using different pearl cotton. So prepare some of those. And then for your twigs, if you're doing the main branch of a cherry blossom, I like to use a thicker one. This is the 18 gauge, but we're going to have some smaller blossoms coming off of this. So I'm going to use the slightly thinner one. This is the 22 gauge, and I'll probably cut four inch lengths just using my wire cutters. Remember, if you guys have questions, feel free to write in and ask them. Allie will let me know. We have a lot of other great paper flower making classes on our site. I'm just going to snip this because that's where the threads are. Yeah. Crystal just wrote in and said, hello, I just got my Creative Bug subscription. I am so excited. Hi, Crystal. Welcome to Creative Bug. It sounds like Crystal is a newbie, new to Creative Bug. Welcome. I'm super excited that you found out about the live shoots and are joining us. And of course, this will be archived tomorrow on CBTV, which is the free channel on creativebug.com. So be sure to check that out. Welcome, Crystal. Um, I hope you like what you see here today and are hunting around the site. There's so many great things. Um, if you're looking for more paper flowers, we've got some awesome classes with Livia Chetty. We've got some with Leah Griffin as well, using a different style of paper flower. And then I might have a few live shoots that are archived also that have paper flowers. So take a spin around the website. All right, so this is like, can be sort of an assembly. So you can prepare your stamens. You can cut a bunch of your four to six inch smaller gauge cloth wrapped wire. You can tear off a bunch of your floral tape. And I think I mentioned this earlier, this comes in white, green, silver, gold, usually a dark green and brown. If you have brown, that's awesome. But if you don't have brown, I'm gonna show you a little trick using some brown tissue paper. 
If you've never worked with floral tape before, something that might be handy is you need to get used to working with this. We're gonna be using it a lot. So you need to hold it at an angle, like so they have like a 30 degree angle there in between. And you kind of pinch it and as you spin down the length of this wire, you're kind of keeping this angle, you're pulling it taut so it gets kind of sticky and it doesn't hurt to make this thicker. So I would practice that a few times if you've never worked with floral tape before because what you don't want is to spin in this direction and hold it out at a 90 degree angle and nothing's gonna really happen. You're just gonna go and you're just gonna be like, well, I can't get down to the bottom and then you wind up with this big lump. So that's not what you want. You wanna be holding it at an angle and spinning. So give that a few tries or practices if you've never worked with this before. Just like that. I make it look really easy, but it does take a little bit of muscle memory. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attach our stamen, and I'll probably do this little smaller one. And I made this knot just so it's easy to hold on to all these little bits. We're gonna just kind of put it at the top. Maybe give yourself, I don't know, an eighth of an inch up there. And we're gonna attach this just using some of our floral tape. Pull it really taut and kind of pinch and hold everything in place. And you don't need all of it, so I'm just doing about that much and tearing it off, and that's the beginning of my stamen. And again, you can make a bunch of those, so why don't we do that? I've got two stamens here. Put my knot, pinch and hold. Now, if you have a little gap like that, where I can still see my thread, we're gonna be putting petals over this eventually, but let's say you like to keep it really clean, then you just go back over with your floral tape until you've got it covered. And sometimes that can be nice to kind of build up the base of a flower, like a carnation or something. They have like a really bulbous little flower there. I have to say in general that when I'm making paper flowers, I am not staying super true to life. I like to just kind of get the feeling or the look of the flower, or sometimes I totally just go off and just create my own kind of flower. Just because I like it, I enjoy the process. I don't need to make something that is super scientific looking because to me that's not as enjoyable. Um, if that is your style, then you can really study the petal shape of the flower. You can look at actual cherry blossoms, kind of take them apart and see how they're made. They do tend to have a darker center. You can play with um, water coloring some tissue paper. There's all kinds of things you can do to create like your own adaptation, but I like to just kind of have fun and have it be fluffy and feel like a cherry blossom but not have it take me like 30 minutes to make a single one so as you like to do it is fine I'm just gonna make a few more stamens here Courtney, why don't you do that? Would you tell the folks at home about our one month free trial? Is that the Joanne 30? Ali is reminding me that uh, we have a one month free trial. So if you have never watched any of our classes on Creative Bug, you've just been here hanging out on the live shoots with me. That's awesome. But we have uh, over a thousand classes by over a hundred artists and experts in their field on our site. You can use the code Joanne30 to get one month free on Creative Bug. And um, I don't know, we have so many great things. We've got illustration, quilting, sewing, pattern drafting, embroidery. We're in the middle of this really awesome daily floral challenge with Pam Garrison. I've been seeing a lot of great posts from a lot of you guys at home and on Instagram using the hashtag CBDrawDay. So there's a lot to be inspired with and um, there's so much more to just be searching out. So check that out with the code Joanne30. Allie's gonna post it. Thank you for the reminder. All right, I've got a few there trim off a few more of these. If your wire cutters don't get through the thread that is wrapping these wires, that's fine. That's not its job. So you can use your scissors for the thread, but you don't want to be cutting the wire with your scissors, as I mentioned before. All right, this guy, we'll make another one. Again, if they're too long, don't worry about it. You can trim them later. Pinch and hold really tight. Hold at that angle and wrap down. You don't have to wrap the whole thing. We're just getting these stamens on here. You can play with different kinds of pearl cotton. I like the pearl cotton as opposed to just regular like DMC embroidery floss because the pearl cotton is twisted. It doesn't unravel as much, but maybe you like a really kind of shaggy center. So you could play with using that uh, DMC. You could also play with some vintage pips or some new pips that you buy in the wedding section. 
So most of your supplies will be in the floral section except for those pips, which is the stamen, what the stamen is called when you buy those little things. I used to do a lot of paper flower making. I've done it for many weddings and it's really fun to do. It's great for like party favors or brunches, dinner parties, etc. Okay, so there we have our little stamens and next we're gonna focus on our petals. So I don't need a lot of tissue for this. I'm just gonna cut off like, I don't know, about three inches. I'm just gonna do the length of the tissue paper that's already here. This is definitely not precise, which is something I love about this. Like I said, I'm not making something that's perfectly scientific. I'm just folding it in half, folding it in half, and then I'm gonna fold it in half again. So I wind up with something that's maybe an inch and a half by an inch and three quarters, something like that. And I've got all these layers here, and I'm just gonna cut a rough, almost like a heart shape. So start at the bottom, do a little dip in, a very subtle heart and then come back almost and then I have these little folds here I just want to snip those off because I want these to all be separate and then the thing that I think makes something look really like a cherry blossom is I'm going to take kind of you know whatever my stack is here like three or four at a time and I'm going to with my thumbs and my finger kind of crimp the edges like little pleats and I think that really feels more like a cherry blossom petal. It looks a little crazy now, but trust me, like crumpling paper is some of the things that makes flower petals look the most realistic. When you like are out and about now that everything is in blossom, take a look at some flower petals. They look like they need to be ironed. So I've asked the folks at home what their favorite flower is. We've got a lot of poppies. Um, mm. Dennis says lavender. Jamie says lily of the valley. So Ali asked um, you folks at home what your favorite flowers are. We heard a lot of poppies, so hopefully you guys are checking out Leanna or Hey All Day's painting, so that's what she paints. And then um, we've got lavender, lily of the valley. Yep. Yeah. Um, and what is your, Courtney, what is your favorite flower? Oh, no, my favorite flower. Ali's asking what my favorite flower is. You know, it depends, <laughs> right? Like, I think every woman loves a good peony. Those are really beautiful. I would never um, shy away from a bouquet of peonies if someone gifted them to me. You know, I'm not a huge rose person, except for in a garden. Like, I think English roses in a garden are really pretty, but, like, I don't like to be gifted roses so much. Um, I love pansies, hence the tattoo here. Um, you know, and I, it changes. It just depends. My grandma had a really beautiful rose garden, so there's something I like about roses, like I said, out in the wild. But, I don't know, in my own home, I also really like flowers that um, kind of die gracefully or dramatically so tulips are really beautiful because as they start to like droop over and really open up and the petals fall that can be really romantic too so I like that too <laughs> and our first question comes from Phil yep hi Phil, Phil says hey Courtney do you have any tips for attaching origami flowers to floral wire I seem to lose the paper when attaching the wire to the paper oh Phil is asking do you have any tips for attaching origami flowers to wire and we are, let me make my flower and then we're going to attach it. But just for that, um, I'm, I don't have as much experience using origami. Um, I'm just not that precise a folder, to be honest. But I would say that origami paper tends to be very thin. Um, you might want to reinforce the part where you're making a hole and put a little bit of washi tape there that's like interesting, decorative, or coordinates with the paper you're already using. The other thing you could do is pre-punch that hole. Instead of using the wire itself, maybe use like a needle or a pin or even like a little pin tool so that you get a nice clean hole that you can pass the wire through and you're not having to press really hard, which can puncture the bottom of your flower. So give that a try and let me know if it works. All right, the other thing that you really need for this is tacky glue. Um, I've taught paper flower making in person with many, like hundreds of people over the last 10 years, and tacky glue is always the glue I recommend. Something like Elmer's glue is too wet. It takes a really long time to sort of set up or dry, and that will leave you holding a single petal to your stamen for like five minutes, and that's totally boring. Who wants to do that? Hot glue, you'll burn your fingers, and when it dries, it's very thick and cumbersome. And for tissue paper, it's not necessary. If you're working with a really heavy Italian crepe paper or something like that, hot glue may be your friend in that case. I like tacky glue. It gets the job done. Um, it has the rice viscosity. It sets up pretty quickly, even if it's not fully dry. So this is absolutely what I would recommend, 100% tacky glue. You can ask me again what glue I prefer, but I'm telling you right now, it's tacky glue. This is the one, okay? 
So you don't need a lot of glue. And just like everything else I've said, you can create like an assembly line. This has been sitting here for a minute, so let's use a bit of my scrap. Just a little bit, like the tiniest little amount. And you can pre kind of dab glue onto the bottom. So not the crumpled end, but the straight end of your petals. Uh, a hot tip for tacky glue, because it is kind of thick, I put it into a jar like this until I'm ready to use it. And then once I start using it, I just always lay it down. If you put it up like this, you're gonna be spending more time trying to get the glue to come to the tip than you are actually making flowers. So that is super tedious, you don't wanna do that. Let's just glue that many, because I probably won't do more than that on this one flower. And then this is the part that is like not exact, but this is what I love about it. The first one I kind of like pinch and hold in place and it can be very tight around your stamen, that's fine. You rather have it be tight than loose because you can fluff these out later. And then you're gonna kind of rotate and overlap your petals and you're always just pinching. And you can see that the tissue paper is very thin and it sticks pretty readily. Um, I don't have to wait for things to dry perfectly, but everything is kind of holding together. And this is why the tacky glue is so great. I think only two more petals for that. Oh, which is exactly how many I glued. So that's nice and kind of rotate and see where you want to place that guy. Things don't have to be perfectly symmetrical either. Remember, you know, nature, although there are parts of it that are super perfect, it also has like, you know, little things on it, little bugs, little brown spots, little imperfections, and that's what's cool about it. So there's your kind of first cherry blossom, which I think is so beautiful. You can, um, especially if you're working with a different kind of paper, reinforce all of these by doing another bit of floral tape I don't think I need that. Instead, what I wanna do is to really make this look like a cherry blossom. Instead of having green, I want this to be brown. So if you have brown floral tape, just go ahead and add it. But because I don't, we're gonna use a little bit of brown tissue paper. I've cut these into anywhere from like a quarter to a third of an inch. Half inch might be a little thick. You want something that's about the width of your floral tape. And because it's not sticky or stretchy, what we're gonna do first is use a little tiny bit of the tacky glue and just put it on one side of our stem there, all the way down. Not a lot, right? Just a little. But we're going to attach it in the same way we do with the floral tape, but we're not pulling because it's not stretchy. We are keeping it at an angle so that we can travel down the stem. And it is gonna get on your fingers and that's great because it's gonna help everything stick together. You can just tear it. So that's well, still stuck to my fingers. Okay, so that's one. Let's make another one. Since we've got our pieces here, I'll probably need to cut more petals. And the amount of petals that you have is totally up to you. You can do a really full, chunky, pom-pom style cherry blossom, or maybe you have a blossom that is just slighter. It has only maybe five or six petals. That is totally up to your discretion. And like I said, the inside of a cherry blossom is a little bit darker. So before you glue, you could actually come in here with some chalk pastel, some watercolor or something, and add some tinting to the inside of each of your petals if you want. I've also um, kind of more methodically trimmed down my tissue paper and actually just like painted a stripe of paint like right down the center and then known where I'm gonna cut my petals. So that's something that you consider too. I do that more for larger flowers. It's just really fun to play with like more unexpected combinations. Maybe you do cherry blossoms all in white because you see those. Maybe you pick something that's more blush tone instead of pink. Um, you can take this technique and adapt it to whatever style you prefer. Just use all the petals that are here. Pressing, pressing, pressing. Pinching, you can fluff it out. Let's say that didn't feel super secure. Maybe I just want to give it some extra security. I'm going to do a little bit more floral tape. Pulling it really taut and wrapping down. But I can fluff back out, you know? That's, I'm not, it doesn't matter if I squish it a little. And then again, let's add that brown stem. Just using a little bit of the tacky glue all the way down my strip of tissue paper. Do you have any other questions? Cool. 
I absolutely love making paper flowers. I actually learned how to do it when I was like 13 or so. Of course, you know, everyone makes those like tissue paper corsages in kindergarten for Mother's Day and my grandma had hers next to her bedside until, you know, she was 80. But um, my mom knew a woman whose mother-in-law had actually been a milliner from South America and she used to make flowers for hats and sold them like at gumps when she first came to the United States and she's the one that taught me how to make paper flowers and she was really sweet and she mostly um, spoke Portuguese and very little English but we we made it work okay so there are two this one's thicker because it's that one that I was wrapping my floral tape on over and over but that's okay right it looks more like real so okay so then we have two and then to attach them so you can keep going you could do three or four and then I like to just wind all the bottoms together let's say you want to add another like maybe we're going to make this a big branch I'm actually going to trim it down just so I can fit everything on the table so let's say we, we just want our blossoms to be at the top so once you do that and you want to start attaching components together you are going to come back to your floral tape and add them together you don't need the glue at this point anymore um, not for the floral tape anyway and just find a place where it kind of fits together, right? If things are feeling really chunky, then maybe you adjust a few times. But we're gonna use our floral tape to really get everything together. Just pulling taut, wrapping at an angle. I feel like there's a bit of a jog there, so I will just wrap that little section again. That's where our wire ended. I just wanna like fill it out a bit. You can do that until it's a little more tapered. Floral tape is like super miraculous. I don't even know when it was invented, but I don't think it's changed and it's pretty amazing. Again, I want to make this brown, so we'll do the same thing we did on our little pieces. Add a bit of tacky glue all the way down. Your fingers will get sticky. And even just from the wax from the floral tape, they'll get sticky over time. So when that happens, just take a little break and wash your hands all right and here so my tissue paper is not stretchy so be careful not to tear it if you do no big deal you just start over in whatever area you tore it and because I've got the tacky glue and I'm traveling down the length at an angle this is similar right and there we have our cherry blossom branch just with two blooms this one oh I have like a little green spot there no problem just use a little bit of tacky glue I told you this would be my best friend right and then just a little bit of paper you don't need a ton because it's such a small spot it's sticking to my fingers more than it is to my cherry blossom Allie had a great idea. You could make a really beautiful floral crown with this. So you would do the same thing and you would just continue adding each of your little individual components. So like I could add this now and I would do the same thing where I wrap it, use my floral tape and then use my tissue paper to make it brown or if you have brown floral tape that works too. So let's do that here just so you can see it. We'll do this one more thing and then I'm going to show you how to do it with yarn. So same thing and this is how a floral crown would happen. And these are really nice too because like I said, um, you are gonna be inspired by the beauty of nature, but then this is much more long lasting and allows you to keep something and have like an heirloom piece. And I love the idea of like a birthday crown that you get out only on your birthday every year for adults and children. So now we've got more blossoms. And because everything is wire, you can play with which way your blossoms face. Um, if you're making something that's just going to lie flat on the table, then maybe everything is kind of pressing upwards and you get a fiddle with this and you can fluff out your tissue paper. So it's very forgiving in that way. Let's do our paper wrap and then I'll move on to the yarn ones. You could also make like little barrettes. I know um, in the jewelry aisle at Joanne you can get like little blanks for making barrettes and things. This would be really sweet for little teddy bear like if you want to make a little crown for your teddy bear and a matching one for the teddy bear's owner. 
And like I said, this isn't necessarily super like botanically accurate maybe. So just by switching the color of your blossoms, you might get a different feel. And you can do something that's not specific to cherry blossoms, but just like a little floral crown is pretty. You could do white, play with the stamen color by changing your thread. My hands are getting very sticky. <laughs> there we go. All right, so there's our cherry blossom. And that can go in our little vase. So um, surprisingly, as I was driving to work this morning, my friend Christine, who has a pet portrait illustration class on our site on Creative Bug, she texted me a photo of uh, Osage Indian backer board for carrying um, a baby. And on the end of it, it had these little wool pom-poms with little thread stamens. So they were meant to look like little blossoms. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna do cherry blossoms today and I'll do a yarn version for you. I'm gonna try it out. So this one's for Christine. And it's the same principle, but we're gonna use yarn instead. So let's, um, we've already got our stamen here and it's attached just like we did earlier together. And forgive me because I do not know what yarn this is, but I think it's 100% acrylic. It's um, a chunky, and I just like the color and the texture. You want something that's fluffy. Uh, you could also do a really fine yarn that has like a really fluffy texture. So um, I've seen those, like maybe they're an Angora or something. And this is a great project just for your scraps. I feel like we always have a lot of scraps. So I don't know how long I want to make this. Maybe it's about five inches or so. I'm just kind of folding it back and forth. This is um, just very by eyeball. And then if you want, you can tie it in the center if that helps you feel like things are gonna stay less loosey-goosey because you're working with yarn instead of paper. The yarn just works a little bit differently. We won't be using glue for this. We're just gonna be using the floral tape. And actually, these are quite huge. I did not need to make it that long. I could probably actually double this up. Ah, that's fine. All right. So I'm actually just going to trim this off. So you could cut your loops, but it's pretty long, so I don't need all of that. And then I like to tie it in the center and kind of leave a tail because then I can sort of use that when I'm attaching this, like to hold on to. If you take all of these and tie it in a knot in the center like we did with these other stamens, you get this like huge bulb, which is a little bit cumbersome and doesn't feel like a cherry blossom anymore. Maybe that's better for making like a billy ball or something. So I like tying it in the center and having this tail to kind of hang on to. And I'm just going to kind of fold it around, keep this tail coming down and pinching everything really tight. We're going to wrap with just our floral tape. So it's not exactly in the center, you just kind of like plopped it and squished it. <laughs> now this part you gotta be really tight with because this is all being held together just by the tension of the floral tape. And I start higher, do a few wraps, and then because um, I just always do this with my left hand, this is how I do it, but maybe you do it with your right hand, I don't know. And then you don't need tails quite that long, but we'll just leave them in there and it helps just to secure so that head of the cherry blossom is being held in with those little ties that we did. And then here you just trim. And because of the way this particular yarn is, I actually like to open these up so I get something that's fluffier. So this part may feel a little fiddly, but it actually goes pretty quickly. It's kind of like, um, like a bouffant hairstyle. Like when you're pulling it apart, it kind of like rats the bottom and makes it fuller, which is cool. So these are my yarn versions of cherry blossoms inspired by Osage Native American blossoms on a, on a baby carrier. <laughs> As presented to me by my friend via text this morning. <laughs> and same thing, then I would cover this with my tissue paper. So that's what this looks like and added in the same way. And you could keep on going. And these are really fun too. It's just a different feel. Maybe you really, you have a lot of scrap yarn and not a lot of tissue paper. So this is what you want to do. But I still, I feel like both of these, this gives you a little bit more delicacy, but they both have that luscious, like really feminine, fluffy quality of a cherry blossom. So I think they both are really successful and really fun to make. The last thing I wanted to show you is that you can just make your blossoms 
um, using your stamens and then actually gluing your petals to the stamen itself and then just attaching that whole thing to an, a real stick. So this is a real stick where I just made the stamen, attached my petals, and then glued the whole thing using tacky glue onto the stick itself. And I didn't use any extra tape. If you feel like your petal isn't full enough, then you can, or your blossom isn't full enough, then you can actually start to glue some petals onto the stick as well. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you have some great branches that you love the look and the shape of, then you could add some little paper blossoms. Yeah. I think these would be so cute for Mother's Day. Like I said, they'd be good package toppers. Allie had the idea of making them into a floral crown, which you absolutely could do. You could do a long table runner. Um, oh, I was gonna say one other thing. If you do wanna make it like a, a place card holder or a package topper, you can take a bit of washi tape. Sorry, I keep pretending like I'm done and then I keep starting with new things. Take a bit of washi tape or any, you could even do just paper if you want. Um, and then I like to use a micron. It does have to dry, so I wrote for mom. And then I put it on. And you'll notice that like I wrote sort of right of center. So what you're gonna do is loop this over and try to get these to line up as best you can. But it's washi tape, so if you make a mistake, you could just pull it apart, so that's not perfect. I want it to be perfect. So I like to do that, smush it down, and then just trim the edge, create this like little flag and I think those look so pretty so again you can put that on a plate for Mother's Day brunch or a little picnic or just as a package topper it could say happy Mother's Day and you can do the same thing with paper and just use a little bit of tacky glue or double-sided tape to keep your flag closed sounds like we don't have any questions Thank you guys for joining us. Um, welcome any newbies to Creative Bug. We do these live shoots every Tuesday and Thursday. You can tune in at 4 p.m. PST. We often have our artists who are in the studio with us talking about what they're making in the studio and uh, kind of a teaser or sneak peek of their classes coming out in the future. And then you can watch this archived on creativebug.com tomorrow. And we'll see you on our next live shoot.